This year, Loose Women launched a groundbreaking campaign about domestic abuse. It's called Facing It Together. As well as shining a light on the stories of female survivors, male charities told us they'd had an 80% increase in calls to their helplines, with one in seven men experiencing abuse in their lifetime. It's something we here at Loose Men knew we had to support. Now, I recently sat down with two survivors whose lives were made hell by the women they were married to, to find out how they were able to move on. I'm with Robin Richard, two survivors of domestic abuse. After 20 years of domestic abuse, Richard secretly filmed his wife's actions, leading to her being jailed for four years. His story was recently covered in a Channel 5 documentary. Meanwhile, Rob's former wife is now serving time in prison for attempting to hire a hitman following their split. Rob, Richard, thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And it's important that you guys sit with us and tell us your stories. Rob, we'll start with you. Way back, I met my ex-wife at uh, university. Very soon after that, um, things started to become really intense and I started to pull away from uh, my friends and my family. We moved to the opposite end of the country um, to be effectively completely by ourselves and all of a sudden you turn around and you realise that actually my ex was my entire life. Uh, what kind of things was she saying that would stop you from seeing your friends? Um, she never said I couldn't, but she would make it incredibly difficult for me to go. So Rob, things escalated and then you separated from Victoria, is that right? Things became really acrimonious and became very, very difficult. How did the police get involved? By that point I was relatively used to, to police turning up at my house, um, but this time they, they were there to tell me that she had been arrested um, for trying to engage the services of a professional hitman. It's incomprehensible, uh, the fact that someone would do that. Your story is completely different. It was so, at the beginning, I felt like everything in the relationship was, was normal. And in my case, I think that probably lasted like about probably about two years, I think. So in terms of physical abuse, it'd be things like, you know, just pushing and shoving and slapping and things. Obviously, in hindsight, looking back and see, any of those things are completely wrong. And it would all, nearly always be when she, was, when she was drunk. The abuse started to escalate, and I was, I was getting marks on my face, I was punching and kicking, and things like that. You got really Black violent. eyes, yeah. At that time, I was traveling with work, and I'd have to um, put makeup on and things when I was going to meetings and things like that. But that's the most difficult stage for me to look back on and think, well, why didn't I leave at that time? How could I put up with something f f for so long? So the one thing I know that people are going to be asking, why didn't you say anything? And it's the one question that I ask myself. Right. You know, why can't you say anything? You're the guy, you're the man. But saying that, do you think there's a bit of stigma be, be behind? You're the guy, you're the man. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Oh, come on, be, ma be, be what we deem stereotypically masculine and deal with the situation. Exactly. That's exactly the point. The reason why I couldn't say anything is because of those things. Right. It, it was shocking what was going on. You had all the recordings made, and then when a friend saw the footage of what was going on, he realised how serious it was, and he went and called the authorities. And he was concerned to the point where he said, well, I'm going to come down and see you. So he came down to see us. That's when he noticed that I had um, a bruise, probably a black eye or something like that. I just kind of surrendered to the truth and just thought, oh, I've just do a leaf. I'm just going to say what's happened. I didn't, I didn't want to make Karen making up excuses for her. And subsequently, I'd sent him some videos of, what of the abuse because I wanted to check that um, I wasn't overreacting. And then that's when he'd sent them to um, like adult safeguarding and then um, the police got involved and then she was, she was arrested. You know, luckily, these days there's lots of different groups that you can talk to and there's so many people out there there to help you. But if you don't feel as if you, you can get in touch with them or if you don't know how to get in touch with them or you're scared, um, that is really, really problematic. Having heard from Rob and Richard, I wanted to find out what help is available to men. I'm with Mark Brooks from one of the UK's leading male abuse charities, Mankind Initiative, to hear more. Uh, Mark, we discovered that domestic abuse comes in many shapes and forms. What are the most common? 
The most common for men is psychological control, where they're basically being uh, told they're worthless, being belittled, being humiliated, but also economic abuse, not having any uh, control over their, their own finances, but also being isolated from their friends and family, being told that if you leave, you'll never see your kids again. If we're fearing the worst, if we're fearing that there is a case of domestic abuse amongst our friends, what telltale signs should we look out for? Firstly, if you haven't seen them for ages, when you used to see them regularly. Also, if they've got injuries and bruises, which they're continually making uh, excuses for. But also whether they become more depressed, more anxious, more withdrawn. So what are the best ways to get our friends to open up if something is going on at home? A lot of it is around having open-ended questions, for example. Just saying, how are you doing? You know, how's things at home? So what then happens is that over a period of time, that person will see that you are interested in their well-being and the door is moved just ajar and that means that at some stage they will actually walk through that door and tell you exactly what is going on. Well also Mark, as we've seen with Richard and Rob as well, there is a life after domestic abuse. There's a great service for men in every large town, city and county across the UK. More and more friends are taking it seriously and society as a whole and the police. So if you are a male victim, you can become a male survivor. Powerful stuff. Yeah, powerful stuff indeed. Richard's documentary, My Wife, My Abuser, the secret footage is available to watch on My Five. And Rob's book, Married to the Black Widow, is out now. Jordan, that's a hard-hitting... Yeah, film that we've just seen. Really, really is. It sort of takes you back for a second, right? It makes you go, whoa. And I do find some of the points so interesting here. You brought up Vernon when you when you was chatting to, to Richard and Rob. I take I think about if, if my own personal experience, I've been lucky enough to, you know, never have anything like that happen in my life. But if it did, I would imagine it would be quite difficult. You know, if you saw me walking down the street, you know, I'm six foot five, covered in toes, and you probably wouldn't assume I'd be in a situation like that. And I think I probably would have felt or would feel a way about speaking out or saying something if I was in that situation. Especially as because I'm not sure, until I just watched that myself, I didn't know there was charities out there helping people like that. There was organisations, there was the support there. That's why I think it's so important, like having that chat with Richard and Rob, shining a light on it, hearing their stories, hearing that you're not alone, mm -hmm. and knowing that if you do need that help, there are places you can go. Absolutely, there are. And I'm just going to name a few just quickly. Mankind Initiative, they've got a helpline. Men can also call Men's Advice Line directly or use their web chart. Survivors UK, a support service for male survivors who have been sexually abused. The charity Refuge primarily supports women and their children, but they are on hand to support men through community services offered to them. And also you can check out the Loose Women website as well. Yeah. Uh, Anton, it's quite a powerful watch. Mm. Um, one thing we always talk about on Loose Men is communication. Having yeah. that group of friends around your way, can open up and have a good honest chat. I like the comment there about the door being slightly ajar every time you speak to someone, just ask, asking questions that, you know, uh, the, uh, I like that. I love that analogy of the door, ju the door just being slightly ajar and eventually you can push through. And that's it, really. The biggest thing with all these things, and I've, I've realised over the years, and it doesn't matter what it is, you often suffer in silence and you think you're the only one. And it's important to realise you're not, and that's the biggest message. Joe, there's that word again, masculinity. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it somehow seems to haunt us. It's, it's, mm. it's like a shadow yeah. that we sometimes step into, uh, and it, it can be a big burden as well, because the gentleman was saying there that sometimes they didn't talk to the friends because well, that's not what blokes do. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 I won't be doing that, you know, and, and taking all the abuse. Um, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah, Joe? I think, <clears throat> for me personally, masculinity has changed over the years. You know, I feel as as a man looking after my kids, doing nappies, going to work, doing school runs, makes me more masculine than someone that goes down the pub, you know, and doesn't see his kids. I think this is all about education as well. You know, the, you know, domestic um, abuse um, with men, as um, to, uh, men, women towards men, has been going on for a long, long time. Mm. It's just that we haven't heard about it. So it's about educating people about. Educating men as well of, of what is acceptable. It's all about education and, and learning what, what you can accept as a human being, not as a man or as a woman, but as a human being, 
what you're willing to accept. So I just think, you know, the more we speak about it, the more, you know, VTs like that that you've done, Vern, to bring awareness on it, the better. And in, in a few years' time, this subject won't be brought up as much because we would have educated people. There would have been more of a structure for men to go to if they was feeling this way. Um, it's just so sad. It's so sad that some people get stuck in these situations. Well, the numbers are quite powerful. One in three victims of domestic abuse are male, and for 65% of these men, their abuser is their partner. One in seven men will be a victim of domestic abuse in their lifetime. 25% of domestic abuse crimes recorded by police were committed against men. Just over 20% of male victims have failed to tell anyone they are a victim of partner abuse. In 2017-2018, it was 49%. I mean... It's not like it's it's not happening. The stats are there. It's definitely happening. Yeah, exactly. You know. And if you have been affected by anything we've been discussing, there's help and support, like I said, on the website, itv.com forward slash loose women. That's itv.com forward slash loose women. You can also call the 24-7 free helpline, which we've shown on the screen throughout this conversation. It's 0808 2247. 0808 2247.